Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Matthew Walker with Medical Device Academy and today we're going to be answering the question, what is 62304? 62304 is an international standard published by the International Electrotechnical Commission and is the standard for medical device software, software lifecycle processes. IEC 62304 is currently in date revision 2006 and has an additional amendment that was released in 2015. So the full title should be IEC 62304 2006 plus A1 2015 to include both the standard and the 2015 amendment. So what exactly does 62304 address? It may sound self-explanatory, but life cycle processes for software. And when discussing software, that includes both standalone software or software as a medical device, as well as embedded or software that's integral to the function of a medical device. And speaking of medical devices, that includes both what would traditionally be considered a medical device, as well as in vitro diagnostic medical devices. And for example, these can be regulated a little bit differently. In the European Union, there's both the MDR for medical device regulations and also the IVDR for in vitro diagnostics. But it doesn't matter. They're all medical devices and it's all medical device software. So what is involved in the total life cycle of software? Well, in this standard, there are five processes that are addressed throughout the life cycle of your software. It's your development, maintenance, risk management, configuration management, and problem resolution processes. But before all of that, it begins with a rationale or justification for assigning your software system a software safety classification. That classification will result in a class assignment of A, B, or C. And this is done according to the risk of harm from a hazardous situation that your software system could contribute to in a worst case scenario. And that's excluding special rules for decomposed software items that have been specially segregated and rationalized for independent classification from the software system. Then once you've assigned a software safety classification to your software system, you're going to move to table A1, which is the summary of requirements by software safety class. That table is going to explain which requirements from those processes apply to your software based on the software safety classification. For example, if your software system has a software safety classification of class A, it is not required to fulfill the requirements of subclass 5.1.10 or supporting items to be controlled. The individual requirements of all five of those processes are dependent upon the classification of your software. And all of that is fantastic if you are currently developing new software. The good news is the standard has contingencies for the use of legacy software. If you have legacy software, the standard has requirements for the additional risk management activities you have to perform, what gap analysis you have to conduct. You'll then have to close those gaps and provide a rationale for the use of your legacy software, but legacy software is addressed within the standard. But what does the standard not address? 62304 specifically does not get into validation and final release of your medical device, even if you have a standalone device or software as a medical device. And that comes straight from the standard itself in subclause 1.2. Just like many other international standards, 62304 functions best when it's not used as a standalone 
standard. In fact, there's a dedicated annex that explains the relationship of 62304 to other international standards. Specifically, those standards happen to be 13485, 14971, 6601-1, 12207, 61508-3, and 9003. That doesn't mean those are the only standards referenced. If you read through 62304, it will contain specific references to individual clauses of other standards, but they're called out within the text of 62304. The accepted current version of 62304 is the 2006 date revision with the inclusion of the 2015 amendment. Unfortunately, it's a little bit dated. And you can see if you look at table C1, the relationship to ISO 13485 is to the 2003 date revision. And everyone within the medical device community will recognize that 13485 is currently in the 2016 date revision. But if we look at the screenshot on this slide, you can see that the second edition of IEC 62304 could be released as soon as June 2022. But for now, we have IEC 62304 2006 plus Amendment 1 2015. The good news is that this has a stability date through 2025. So what do you have to do to comply with 62304? Well, you have to implement the process requirements of the standard. And those process requirements are based on the software safety classification of your software system. The standard even tells us in subclause 1.4 how to verify compliance. And that is done through inspection of the documentation required which of course is going to depend on your software safety classification, but it will include your risk management file and an assessment of the processes, activities, and tasks required. Now, how do you do that? Well, the standard tells us again, you can do that through an internal or external audit. Now, be aware that any of the as appropriate tasks and requirements, if they don't apply to you or aren't appropriate for your software system, that's fine, but you have to include a justification for why those as appropriate tasks were not performed. So when was the last time 62304 was part of your internal audit criteria? As an internal auditor, it's something I don't see terribly often. And just like other standards, like we see with 13485 and 14971, when was the last time you did an audit just to 62304? And thinking with an even bigger picture, how is your audit program including this standard within it? Or even better, are you 62304 certified? As you can see with this screenshot, TubeSuit is an example of a certification body that provides 62304 certification. And if you read some of the background text, you'll see that the process for 62304 certification isn't much different than the process for 13485 certification. But in a nutshell, that's what is 62304. So if you stuck with me this far, I genuinely appreciate that. Thank you. If you found this video helpful in any manner, please just give the like button a a friendly little tap. And if you happen to need help with an internal audit to IEC 62304 or assistance with software safety classification rationales, feel free to contact us at rob at 13485cert.com or visit us on our website, medicaldeviceacademy.com. Or 
if you just want to hang out with me on LinkedIn, feel free to follow the links in the description below. Thank you and have a fantastic day.